because we've got about mm, two minutes to finish this. And you'll definitely want a highlighter today. So your examples for these items up here, you want to be using <coughs> appropriate pictures. So yes, this is a point. What do you want to label it? We typically we'll label it with capital letters. It could be any capital letter. And if you're going to draw a line, Your line can go in whatever direction you want, but at a minimum, it has to have points A and B on this particular line. You have more points than A and B on there, but you don't have A and B on there. And then for your ray, this ray is saying that it must start at point D and go through F in some direction. So there's your ray. So to give you a new definition, which you should put on your flashcard, of a segment. So a segment is part of a line that consists of two endpoints and all points in between them. We looked at that yesterday. Two endpoints and all the points in between them. And so there's your picture of your segment. So number four, array has one what? Endpoint. A line contains infinitely many points. A segment has two endpoints, plural. A segment is part of a line. You are to check the phrase that describes a segment and an X if it does not. Earth's equator, yes or no? No, because it's a circle, right? The right edge of a book's cover, yes. One side of a triangle, yes. Then this is a postulate, it's not my favorite postulate, it's called the ruler postulate. And it says that every point on a line can be paired with a real number called the coordinate of that point. It's essentially, basically a number line. So if I had, um, I'm going to put a picture of it up here. Oh, I don't know why I can't even remember that. That's pretty funny. I'll do 10, 11, 12, 13, 9, 8. So you could assign letters to each of these coordinates. So there's what, six letters or six points on that uh, number line. Each is assigned a specific coordinate measurement like you would on a ruler. That's what I call the ruler postulate. So if I wanted to find the distance from B to E, well, B has a, a point of 9, a coordinate of 9, and um, D has a coordinate of 11. So I can use that to find my distance. That's what they're getting across. I probably <coughs> never test you specifically. They use the ruler postulate. What um, you do need to know is the definition of distance on a number line. So the distance between two points is the absolute value of 
of the distance, actually I'm going to say, oh, yeah, difference, of the distance, of the difference of their coordinates. For instance, if I wanted to find, as we were discussing, the distance from D to D, the notation for the distance from B to D looks like this. It's just B to D, nothing above it, nothing in front of it. This is understood to mean the distance from B to D. There's no notation around it. It is not a line segment. It is not a line, array. It specifically means the distance. So that's new notation for you. And so I could actually subtract those numbers in two different ways. I could subtract them as 9 minus 11 or 11 minus 9. One of those gives me a negative value and one gives me a positive value. Um, since distance cannot be negative, no matter how short you are, you are never a negative height. So don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If you're a negative height, you would be walking upside down with your soles of your feet facing up, and all we would see would be the soles of your feet walking on the floor. Have you ever seen that before? No? Yes. Thinking you might have been on drugs or something. No? Extremely <laughs> uh, So, if we put out the value signs around either of those uh, differences, we should get the same answer for both, which is what? So, two. So, the distance from B to D is two. And that's really what we use the ruler postulate for anyway. So flip that. Look to problem one. I want you to, and well, I'm going to walk you through part 12. But go ahead and label the coordinates of those points that are missing the coordinate values. It's really tough. really tough one to do. Name those coordinate points. Does this number line go by, does every hash mark go by one? No. So the scale on this is a scale of two. So do be careful, if we were jumping uh, hash marks to find distance, you get the distance wrong. If I were to find the distance between U and V and you just went one, two, oh, the distance is two, that's really not accurate, is it? So be beware of your um, scale on that number line. So this one should be negative four, this should be 10, and this should be 14. So they want you to find, there's that new notation, the distance from U to V and the distance from S to B. You have to write a justification for each statement. You're laying the foundation for your proofs. I don't necessarily agree with how the book justifies things. So you need to pay attention to what I want in class versus what you see the answers online. Really important. And so if you see a difference, you want to know, well, can I say this versus that? You have to ask, otherwise you're not going to find out until you take the test. Um, so let's do UV here off to the side. So here's U and V. You could either do 10 minus 14 or 14 minus 10. It doesn't matter. I'm going to put in 10 minus 14. The reason why I chose to take the absolute value of 10 minus 14, the reason why I know to do this is by the definition of distance that I just gave you. I need to do this because the definition of distance says that the distance between two points is the absolute value of the difference. That's my justification. Then from here to here, what am I going to put here? Negative 4. Didn't I just subtract to get there? And then, what's the next answer? Positive 4. And then all we did was we found, or I'll put on here, find the opposite value. That's technically not what we would say. We typically don't do proofs for calculations, but we're just laying the foundation. So do the other side, please. Find the distance from S to B.
What did you get? What's the actual distance? 18, right? So it didn't matter whether you did negative 4 minus 14 or 14 minus a negative 4. If you did 14 minus a negative 4, what do you have to do with the minus minus? Add them, so plus plus. So it does turn out to be either negative 18 or positive 18 here, and then your final answer for that is that would be. So are those segments the same length? Nope. We'll get into what that's what same length segments are called in a minute. Then here's postulate one six. So this is an important postulate. It's used over and over and over again. This should be a flashcard. And it says, and we're going to draw a picture. If, notice it's an if then form. If three points, A, B, and C, are collinear, what does that mean? They're on the same line. And B is between A and C, then they do this godly good. A, B, isn't that the distance from A to B? That's the, what that notation means. Plus the distance from B to C is equal to the distance from A to C. Well, it's a lot of part, it's a lot more difficult to see this if you don't draw the picture that they describe. So we're gonna draw a picture to go with this, and it should be part of your flashcard. Time so to draw a picture of a segment, a line segment, because this is segment addition. And it says three points A, B, and C are collinear, and B is in between A and C. That implies that A and C are the endpoints. Did they say that B was directly in the center? They just said it was in there in between somewhere. So don't put B in the middle because we don't know that for sure. So I just kind of put B somewhere in there. Now, could B, could B be closer to C? Of course. It doesn't really matter for her. So this is what they're saying, that the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C, wouldn't you agree, equals the entire distance from A to C. That's what the segment addition postulate says. The two smaller pieces add to give you the larger piece. Anytime you have a question that looks like this, you've got to draw the segment picture and put in the information here and decide, am I going to add the two segments to get the whole length? Or do I have the whole length on one of the pieces, so I'm going to end up subtracting those to find the missing smaller piece? So then look at what the question is below. Question 13. If AB is 5 and BC is 4, so you've got AB plus BC is equal to blah, 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 blah. Let's draw a picture. We've got our picture there, so I'm going to go off to the side here and sketch that picture. So we've got AC and we've got B here. So they told me that AB is 5, the distance from A to B, and the distance from B to C is 4. So those are the two smaller pieces. So if I want AC, wouldn't I add those two to get the whole distance of AC? So now, because you're trying to figure out, you're, we're again laying the foundation for you to start to write your own equations to solve. This happens to be a very simple one. We're going to get into a more complicated one in a minute. So we've got 4, plus 2, plus 5. I guess I should have switched those. And AC equals what? So then you do number 14, draw out a picture or sketch of it, so that you see what you have and understand why it's subtraction. So on this one, the entire length I wrote is 12. So I put a little bar across the whole thing to show that the whole length from A to C is 12. And the piece, the distance from B to C is 7. So normally, when you're doing this problem on your own, you would assign the unknown piece as x. And we would use the segment addition postulate to set up an equation to solve. You would always take the two smaller pieces and set it equal to the entire large piece. So if I were to set up my equation to solve, wouldn't it be x plus 7 is equal to 12, the whole piece? Do you see why they're subtracting the 7 and the 12? Because in order to solve for this, we would have to subtract 7 from both sides, right? Is equal to 5. So we've got AC is 12, BC is 7, 
and so A becomes out to be 5. So let's look at a more complicated one down here below where we actually have algebra in there, and we're going to write justifications as we go. So they happen to draw a picture. They may not have. They may have just said the same kind of thing up here in a sentence format. You must draw a diagram. A picture is worth a thousand words. To me, this is a word problem. And so you'll start to learn that part of your word problem, you have to draw it out and show what it is that you see. Because if you don't draw it out, you're not going to see the equation that you have to solve. Teachers, please excuse this interruption. If you have any seniors or juniors in your class that still do not have an ID, please send them to the media center. Any seniors or juniors who still do not have an ID, please send them to the media center. Thank you. All right, so in the picture it says in the diagram JL is 120. So the distance from J to L is 120. So that's the whole distance. What are JK and KL? That's the distance from J to K to the distance from K to L. So notice that they set up the equation to solve. How do, they, how do we justify this equation to solve? Where do they get it? How do they know that that's what we set up? Segment addition postulate says so, doesn't it? The two smaller pieces add up to the larger piece. So we start to use these postulates as justification. So this is your segment addition postulate. You are training your brain how to think in this logic reasoning manner. Then from here to here, what do they do? How did JK disappear and become 4x plus 6? They plug it in. What's a better word for plugging in? Starts with an S. There you go. So we use sub, and I want you to start to write this as the substitution. And you have to write out the whole word substitution because otherwise it looks like subtraction, but possibly. So substitution property of equality. That's a technical word for it. Substitution property of equality. Then, what do they do from here to here? They combine like terms. So we're going to, you can put combine like terms. I'm going to put simplify. Then this is what's different from what was required from you in algebra. Remember in algebra, you had to show your work to both sides? In an algebraic proof, which is what this is, they don't usually show the work done to both sides. What do they do to both sides to get from here to here? They subtract to 21. So you're going to call that the subtraction property prop of equality. Because what they did was they subtracted something from both sides. That's that property of equality. To maintain equality, they did something to both sides. You don't have to put subtract 21. Your book will say that, but that's stupid. I'm going to prepare you for your proper proofs. And then from here to here, what do they do? They divide, well, they did, they solve. They solve how? By dividing, right? By 11. So you're going to put the division what? Property of equality. Remember, your book doesn't use those words, which you're going to start to learn to use. Then 16 says, you know that JK is 4x plus 6 and KL is 7x plus 15. <coughs> Use the value of x, which is 9, from exercise 15 to find the distance from jk and kl. So go ahead and do that part. So substitute the 9 back into each of those pieces and show your work in 16. Show where you're doing the substitution. Share your answers with somebody around you to see if they agree with you. Were those your answers? 42 and 78. 
are those segments, JK and KL, the same length? No. Okay. So that brings me to a new definition. Can I flip that or is somebody still ready? I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to stop, even though I'm going to stop right here so I can answer questions on tomorrow's homework, which is only half of today's lecture. You're only going to be able to complete half of tonight's homework. So, and I kind of looked at it, but if you come to anything that talks about congruent segments or segment bisectors or midpoints, don't do those questions. Okay? So, in your book, if you've ever noticed, and I only have my teacher's edition available. If you ever noticed, um, don't they tell you uh, C problem one, C problem two, C problem three, C problem four? Did you notice that in your book? Well, we've only gone through problems one and two. And so on here, this is your student edition. You're going to only go through problems one and two. So, All right, so you're only going to go through problem one and two. So you're going to stop right here at 14. You're not going to do any further than 8 through 14, whatever I have assigned over there. Isn't that um, So my, when I finish this lecture on Monday, it'll be quick. But just know that you're going to stop there, and I will finish that lecture on Monday.